beach, some are in the mall, some doing window shopping, some are in the house, but you are here. Why? Because you love him. Give yourself a hand. You love God. He says we love him. Why do we love him? Because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. God loved us. That is why we love him. I said, Brother of God, the love that is in us is God that put that love inside us. You didn't pick love from the ground. God gave it to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God put love inside you for one reason, so that you can love him back. And for every one of us that is sitting in God's house today, I think we are in the very right place at the right time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory. Now it says we love him because he first loved us. Now, I'm going to uh, explain very quickly what Easter means. How many of you understand what Easter means? Okay, some people's hand are up. They understand what Easter means. So we are going to ask those people to start to tell us one thing that they understand about Easter. Is that okay? <laughs> Pastor Garam is ready. <laughs> he said <saying>, yes. <laughs> okay, I could see Pastor Akos hand was also off. I know that she could tell us something about Easter. But we're just going to listen to me today, okay? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you still glad you're here? Yes. Are you glad you are here? Yes. All right, give me Now, I'm going to share some things with you very quickly that you may not have known before. Number one, Jesus didn't die on Friday. <laughs> Are you surprised to know? Jesus didn't die on Friday. Why do we celebrate Good Friday <clears throat> if Jesus didn't die on Friday? Like that. She says, tell us. <laughs> a lot of people think Jesus died on Friday, but no, he didn't die on Friday. It's true he resurrected on Sunday morning. Now, if he resurrected on Sunday morning, and according to what he said, that when he dies, he will wake up from the dead on the third day. He said, as Jonah was in the belly of this fish of the sea for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man, talking about himself, be in the belly of the earth. That means the grave for three days and three nights. So if Jesus were to have died on Friday, counting from Friday, it will be Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. Am I correct? Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Are you still with me? Yes. From Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which means Jesus would have woken up from the dead on Monday. But that was not when he woke. He woke up on Sunday morning very early Sunday morning. So Jesus died on Thursday. This would be very hard for some people to accept. But why would they always call it Good Friday, that Jesus died on Good Friday? Yes, Pastor, the Holy Spirit said Jesus died on Friday. <laughs> and then Sunday, the, the dead didn't come. On Sunday, he rose up from the dead. Yes. How many of you agree with that? He died on Friday and he rose up on Sunday. But that will not be three days or three nights. And Jesus could not have lied about what he said. Now, I'll quickly explain to you before I go to teach you what I actually intend to teach you today. Now, in Israel, they knew that Jesus 
died before the Sabbath. And Sabbath is Saturday. Am I correct? Yes. So before he died, he was on the cross. And while he was on the cross, there were other things with him on the cross. There were two things, one on the right, one on the left. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Many more people are nodding heads now, which means they are, they are understanding, they are following me. Now, when they were hanging on the cross, and the soldiers watched and know that these guys will be here for a while, because it takes an average of 13 hours for somebody to die hanging on the cross. And when they watch, these guys will be here, and if we leave them here, they won't die until we enter the Sabbath. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, yes sir. They knew that these guys would die until they enter the Sabbath. So what would they do? The soldiers went there and broke their legs. Because when they were hanging on the cross, they supported their weight with their legs. So they remained there, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm trying to explain to you. So they were there, they would be there for a while until their weights keep weighing them down and then they eventually die. But the soldiers knew that it was going to take a while because they've been killing people like that before. So they thought if we leave them there, they may not die until the Sabbath. And it was against the law to have people hanging on the cross on the Sabbath day. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So what do we do? We need to get them die quickly so that we can take them off the cross. Moreover, if they die on Sabbath day, we can't go there and bring them down. That would be work, which is also against the law. Are you with me? Yes. So the soldiers went there and broke their legs, broke their bones, their legs, their head, broke it. So that they sat off the cross and died more quickly. Are you with me? Now, when they broke the first thief, they broke the second thief. When they came to Jesus, Jesus was already dead. He was already dead. Jesus died on the cross on record time. Never a man died in six hours on the cross. Jesus died within six hours being on the cross. Record time. How did it happen? Jesus knew the scriptures have said his own bones will never be broken. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I also discovered that in the scriptures that the Bible didn't say that only about Jesus. He said also that about every child of God, which includes you and includes me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. By the time you know that, from that point in time in your life, you will not allow your bones to be broken anymore. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, I happen to have known that early in my life. And because, and since when I knew it, I knew it doesn't matter where I am. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. I could be in a, a car and they said there's going to be a, a crash. Or in an aircraft, there's going to be a crash. I just know that the bones I'm carrying could never be broken because the word of God cannot be broken. I hear what I'm saying. The word of God cannot be broken. And it is the word of God that says my bones can never be broken. I hear what I'm saying. So I'm always confident wherever I am that there is safety for everybody that is around me because I'm there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm not talking to you about myself alone. You know. Now, it doesn't matter if you had bone broken before. That is before. From now on that you know, you declare my bones will never be broken again. And the moment you start to say it, the devil begins to respond. So what happened when Jesus was on the cross? When it was about the sixth hour, Jesus said, there's no point waiting for them to break my bones because my bones will not be broken. He 
said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He was the one by himself who gave his life back into the hands of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Have some of you heard me say before that I could never be killed in my life? Yes. <laughs> Have some of you heard me say that? Yeah. No, You've never heard me say that? <laughs> no, some of you are shocked. How can a human being say that? That he could never be killed? I have been saying if the devil can hear it again and again, I could never be killed in my life. And I've heard people ask, I'm supposing a stray bullet. I said the bullet can stray wherever it chooses to stray. The child of God could never be killed by an accident. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you didn't know that's the kind of life you are carrying too. It doesn't matter who hates you. It doesn't matter how many devils are in your world. There is a kind of special life that you are carrying. Yeah. Yeah. Apostle Paul said to, his, to the disciples, he said, I, I'm wondering what I should do. Whether I should go and be with the Lord or I should still remain here on earth. He says, I'm wondering. He was talking about death. Whether I should die and go and be with God or I should stay on earth. And be helping you guys. He said, I think for now we stay with you guys. Ah, he was choosing. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are not ordinary people. Yes. Yes. Brothers and sisters, it happened because one man, Jesus Christ, died on the cross. Now, I would have gone through the whole story of Jesus dying on the cross, but you are familiar with that already. Aren't you familiar with that? Yes. Come on, is anyone who's not familiar with Jesus dying on the cross? Yes. Yeah. Now, the reason Jesus died on the cross is so that you can have the kind of life that only he had before. Apostle John wrote that in him was life. And that life, give us John chapter 1. Let's look from verse number 4. Sorry, let's start from verse number 1. Help us understand it. We're going to be a bit quick with the readings. In the beginning was the word of God. And the word of God was with God. And the word of God was God. Verse 2. In the same was in the beginning with God. Three. In all things we are made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Yes, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. Now listen. Listen to me here. From verse 4. Are you hearing me? Come on, are you hearing me? Yes, Now, when he's been talking about this hymn, in him, he's talking about Jesus, the Son of God, who is also described as the Word of God. He says, in him was the life. He says, in him was life. Now, the word that was translated life here in Greek is zoe. In him was Zoe. Now, Zoe is the kind of life that God has inside him. There are different kinds of life. There is the plant life. There is the animal life. There is the human life. There is the God life. In him was the God life. And that God life was the light of man. Next verse. And the light shining in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This kind of light that Jesus is, if he's shining inside darkness, darkness cannot cover it. When this light shines in any darkness, that darkness cannot withstand it. Are you hearing what we're talking about? That darkness cannot withstand it. Next verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Next verse. The same bear witness. Next verse. He was.
was not that light that was sent. Next verse. That was the true light which lighted every man. Talking about Jesus again. He says he is the real light of God that lights every man that cometh into the world. Listen to me again. He said God got a plan all the while to bring you joy and peace, to bring you happiness, to make your life fulfilled and make your life complete. All the great happiness you have been looking for in your life, God's got a plan for it. And that plan was hidden in Jesus, the light of God, the light of every man that comes into the world. God has no way of making your life better except by giving you Jesus. Because the darkness that might be in your life, when Jesus comes in and Jesus be the light of God, he's shining in your life and making the darkness disappear. When I discover that Jesus being in my life is health to my body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I discovered that the day Jesus entered in my life, he brought the God kind of life inside me. And the God kind of life cannot be sick. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? The God kind of life could never be sick. And if Jesus came into my life and brought the God kind of life into my life, that's what he says. He says, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. The moment I came into the world, Jesus had brought the light of God into my heart. Now listen, a lot of people don't know. Even Muslims, Muslims, and mention there some of those religions, Hindus, and Buddhists. Is it Buddhists or Buddhists? Buddhists. And alas, call whatever religion. Listen, brothers and sisters, they too were lit, lit by the light of God when they were born into this world. Are you following what I'm saying? Look at it's the Bible that said so, not me. It says that was the true light which lighted every man. It didn't say which lighted the good man, it didn't say which lighted the Christians, it says which lighted every man. That comment into where? Into the world. He didn't say that comment into the church. That comment into where? In ah, it looks like some of you are not happy that even the Muslims are. But let me tell you, do you believe the Muslims were also lit? They were there. That's how good God is. When God makes rain to fall, it falls on the farm of the good man, it falls on the farm of the bad man. Is that not how it happens in your village? Come on, talk to me. Yes. Have you seen when they say because this man is not a good man, that's why rain has not fallen in his farm for three years. <laughs> but the good men around his farm, rain, uh, come on, talk to me. Yes. God is so good. Let's give him a hand. Yes. I know that you some of you were God. The children that will be born to Muslims, you will make sure that the light of God will not light them up. <laughs> but God is not like that. He is so good. I love God. <laughs> in, in, Jesus is the light of God, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Brothers and sisters, the only difference between me, you, and the Muslim is that the Muslim has not put on that light. Let that out now. 